On April 30th, Katie Taylor and Amanda Serrano faced off in what was billed as the biggest fight in women's boxing history. It's really hard to argue with that. They are two of the best fighters in the world, and this was the first time that a woman's fight was headlining the prestigious Madison Square Garden. In today's video, we're talking about women's boxing's journey to get to this incredible point. Let's dive in. First off, boxing has discriminated against women for too long. To truly make you understand the magnitude of this moment, let's give you some context. Jane Couch had to fight the British Boxing Board of Control for her right to fight in the boxing ring. She won the case, and the high court ruled that she should become the first woman in the United Kingdom to be granted a license to box professionally. Yes, folks, just 24 years ago, women from the UK were not allowed to box, and the BBC's sexist argument was that women are just too frail and emotionally unstable to participate in bouts. And yes, emotionally unstable because of their menstrual cycles. The organization seems to forget that this is the same sport where one of the most celebrated fighters of all time bit off another man's ear because he couldn't handle losing. Is that what emotional stability looks like? Just three years later, a 15-year-old Katie Taylor took part in the first official women's boxing match in her home country of Ireland. Who knew that 21 years later, Taylor would be involved in another historic moment as she and her opponent would become the first female fighters to earn more than $1 million in one one night. And as we've mentioned before, the first to headline the garden. Next up, Jane Couch was in disbelief. British sports promoter Eddie Hearn was co-promoting this contest with the controversial YouTube star turned pro boxer Jake Paul. A couple of days before the fight, he was told that his father, Barry, who was also a famous promoter, was once shocked to hear that Jane had not been paid for some of her fights. That just makes you realize that after decades of prejudice, pain, and discrimination, women's boxing has finally been transformed. So as Katie Taylor and Amanda Serrano were preparing to step into the ring at the most iconic venue in the world, promoter Eddie and pioneer Jane were united in a shared disbelief, relief, and delight. Speaking to The Guardian on the phone, Jane said this of the Taylor and Serrano bout, I can't believe it, but it's brilliant. I'm so glad this day has come, and we completely understand what this means to her. After all, she's been pretty vocal about the personal and psychological cost she had to pay for being the revolutionary who made women's boxing legal in Britain. No one has been through more than her. No one had to fight more than her. The boxing authorities and promoters had repeatedly been cruel to her, and she had often wished that she had the right manager or trainer to look after her. But unfortunately, she was the first, and she had to do everything all by herself. And now, let's talk about how Jane was called names for being a fighter. Despite all the adversity, Jane had a pretty impressive career. During her 39 professional bouts, she fought on the undercard of some really iconic fighters, such as Lennox Lewis, Nassim Hamed, and Roy Jones Jr. In 2003, she was involved in a legendary fight with the fantastic Lucia Riker, the Dutch boxer who had never lost in the professional ring. According to Jane, Riker was so good that if she was just given a proper platform, she would have matched the impact of Taylor and Serrano. Sadly, back then, things were just very different. Despite being so important to women's boxing and even winning a version of the world title once, she didn't get paid for a lot of her bouts. This one time in 2000, she had to make do with the $500 Barry Hearn gave her because he couldn't believe that she was fighting without getting paid. As shocking as that may sound, for Jane, that was business as usual. She was okay with fighting for free as long as it would promote the sport of women's boxing. And along the way, she also had to endure people calling her a freak and a lesbian for merely being a fighter. Because of all this, she suffered from depression and panic attacks for years and years. She couldn't even get into a proper relationship until she was 41 years old. But before the Serrano-Taylor fight, she was brimming with pride. She said that all the girls are doing a fantastic job and she's so glad that they're representing women's boxing in a way she couldn't. She expressed that what was happening in New York was just brilliant and she felt massively proud. And you should, Jane. This would not have happened without you. We're so sorry you had to go through all that, but we hope that seeing the benefits of your struggles in your lifetime will be some small relief. So, what did Eddie have to say about making this fight happen? Eddie expressed that this promotion has continuously surprised him. He revealed that when they sat down with Madison Square Garden's management to make it happen, they said that we have to get this fight and we have to put it in the big arena. He could see that the management was super confident and everyone realized that they could make this a significant moment in the sport. And guess what? 
when the tickets went on sale, it was the second fastest pre-sale in the history of the venue. So if anyone out there still believes that women's boxing can't generate revenue, shame on you. Eddie also revealed that there were more media requests than for some Anthony Joshua fights. They were approached by CNN, The Today Show, and Bloomberg. That's more than just boxing media, that's impact. Next up, face off at the top of the Empire State Building. Around five days before the fight, Amanda and Katie were guests on the Today Show on NBC. You have to realize how huge that is. That program usually only includes news and guests from mainstream America and almost never features boxing. Amanda and Katie were repeatedly making heads turn. That same day, the two fighters engaged in a face off at the top of the Empire State Building and apparently that night blew Eddie's socks off. The building was lit up with the flags of Ireland and Puerto Rico. He couldn't believe his eyes. He had no idea they were going to do that. Women's boxing had well and truly arrived, and in style. And even Eddie's dad didn't believe that women should box. Eddie admitted that before they started working with Katie, even his father thought that women shouldn't box. And he wasn't the only one. All old school promoters such as Frank Warren and Bob Arum thought that boxing was a tough and rough man's sport. Women did not belong here. While he was working with Katie, he realized that broadcasters were merely using women sport as a box ticker. She taught him how that was completely wrong and box ticking is not equality in any way. In 2016, Katie was set to make her pro debut at Wembley and everyone was making fun of Eddie. They berated him for putting a women's fight as the main event at Wembley and claimed that it was embarrassing. But then the fight happened and in front of 3,000 Irish fans, Katie told the whole world that she was a force to be reckoned with. She was doubling up, throwing super powerful punches, switching and moving superbly. Even his dad was taken aback by how good she was. And that is when Eddie knew that he had to give her the platform to convince people. According to him, back then, 80% of the audience thought that women's boxing wasn't for them. And now that 80% has gone down to like 10. He claimed that he knew this was going to happen. All they had to do was let people see fighters like Katie and Amanda and they'll be convinced. Finally, promoting Katie has taught Eddie a lot. Eddie revealed that just four years ago, he went to Katie and said to her that on International Women's Day, they're going to do an all-female card at Madison Square Garden in the Hulu Theater and that it would be a groundbreaking moment. Apparently, he was super excited, but Katie said no way, and she looked super disgusted. She then told him that the only way there could be a sustainable future with women's boxing was for it to become a standalone product as a great sport, not just a token of goodwill. If it manages to stand alone and has its own value, then we can have sustainability and longevity. And he explained that over the last few years, that's exactly what Katie has done. She and Serrano are not selling out the venue because everyone thinks they're supporting women's sport. They're selling it out because people believe it's going to be an awesome fight. Just a few years ago, he had pitched making $1 million in a headline bout at the MSG to Katie as merely a salesman line. Even he didn't believe that a few years later, that would actually happen. She would eventually go on to defeat Amanda in front of a roaring crowd filled with passionate boxing fans. She called it the best moment of her career. Make no mistake, no one really lost that night. Kudos to everyone who made it happen. That's a wrap for this video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.